This is a curvy 3D hard edge modeling tutorial where we model 26 sci-fi models in 15 minutes in curvy 3D. Here's the finished model in curvy 3D4 uh, with a metal shader applied or a metal light map to make it reflective. If I split into four views, you can see the front, the side and the perspective angles. Now I've recolored the model in uh, to show how each part was made. And there are the parts split up. And we're going to be making all of these parts in this tutorial. So first off, the primitives. The cube, the sphere, the cylinder. You can change the bevels and the height and the width with these sliders or you can use the scale tool and scale out using the, the widget handles. I'm going to make a sort of mechanical structure here. If I rotate and click off the handles, I can rotate around any point on the screen. I'm going to scale the parts into place. Now I'm going to copy and duplicate with Control D and mirror this part. If I shift and drag on the groups panel, I can select several objects at once. Then I press Control G to group them together. And then Control D to duplicate and more rotation. And we've got a little structure. This goes at the, to hold on the, the jets for the vehicle. Next this little part which is made out of a sphere. Again we drag to create the sphere. We can change the height to make it into a flattened sort of smarty shape. Rotating with uh, snap rotation to rotate it now neatly into place. There are lots of cylinders. The orange is cylinders in this model. Again, drag to create, we can change the bevel, we can change the width and the height with the sliders. Again, Control D to duplicate, change the width and the height. Uh, dragging one object onto another in the groups panel sets the parent for that object. I'm going to make lots of duplicates now to make an uh, array of objects. So create lots of duplicates, drag one of them out, select them all, and then do distribute. And this will spread them all out evenly. Now we've got like a, a fan effect. Again, duplicate, scale, duplicate, scale. And we can make some details on this, uh, this piston. Next, we're going to move on to the line objects, the purple objects in the scene. You draw a line with a stroke, then you can reshape it with the rulers and redraw tools. The redraw is a semicircle. The simplest ruler just redraws as a straight line. Uh, we can use the soft move tool to shape the curves after they've been drawn. For this longer curve, we draw it from one angle first, and then from a different viewport, we use the redraw curve, and it'll make a composite curve of the two. So it'll try and keep the shape you've drawn in both angles. So you can get quite a complex curve just from drawing it twice. This curve is a normal line with a, a redrawer semicircle, but we're going to add a bump map, a curvy map, which is like a displacement map. And with the text replacement tool, we're going to scale up in V, increase the resolution a bit, change the intensity of the curvy map, and we've made a a bumpy cable, which is still editable. A 
Okay, next we're going to move on to this exhaust. This is probably one of the, the trickiest line shapes in the model because it moves in all three dimensions. Uh, so the way I'm going to draw this is sketch out a rough line from one angle first. Get the rough shape and then drag that into position using the soft move tool until we get roughly the right shape. Then go over that with the ruler tool to straighten up the segments. Use the soft move tool with an intensity of naught to move single points to tighten up the shape and then press S a bit to smooth the curve to get those nice smooth corners. That's the lines, now move on to lathes. Lathes, you drew one or more curves and it turns them into a rounded object. Again, I'm drawing the curves first, then I'm using the ruler to straighten off the edges and the soft move tool with an intensity of zero to drag in points. Uh, I smooth that line to increase the number of points and then I could edit it further. The jets are made out of a sort of squarish donut shape. So I'm going to draw one side of the donut like as a backward C shape. Use the ruler to straighten up the sides. And then I can use curve um, curve mirror to reflect that and close the loop to make a continuous hoop around the donut. These little struts are made from a, a single lathe. So you draw half of a dumbbell shape and then smooth it and edit it into place. S key to smooth the curve. Uh, some more very simple lathe objects. This one's like an inverted truncated cone, just drawn with uh, three lines and lathe symmetry. Just to make a simple sharp edged shape. Um, these screw placements are made out of a lathe object and a sphere. So there's the sphere, it can be fatter and thinner. The lathe object itself, it's quite simple once you work out the profile. Um, there's the shape, use the line to access to tidy it up, use the ruler to sharpen it up. Now next are slab objects. They're flat panels of various thicknesses. Once again we draw it roughly, use the ruler to sharpen up the shape, use the soft move tool with intensity of zero to drag the points into place, and I'm using the grid here to help me make it a more regular shape. The depth changes the depth and we're going to use uh, flat shaded to make the edges sharper. Now once again for the engine block uh, we're going to make a, like a fan effect by scaling in one copy duplicate of the shape, making lots of duplicates and then shift dragging to select them all and aligning, uh, distributing them along the axis, which makes a sort of a fan effect. Again, we can shift drag to select them, control G to group them, and that tidies them away in our scene. We're going to make one more detail object, a sort of V-shaped slab. Uh, when we draw a slab, we don't need to draw it as a complete closed loop. It'll close it automatically for us. Again, we're dragging the points into place, using the grid to help. Flat shaded, 
change the thickness and scale it into place. This just adds a little more detail to the model. Draw another slab now, a slightly more complicated shape. This is going to be the center of the engine block. Again, we've drawn it. We're using the ruler to tidy it up and soft move with intensity of zero to drag individual points. Again, we're going to make a duplicate with control D, scale it down a bit. And this one, we're going to cut holes. Now the holes uh, are part of the slab. We just need to draw with add curve some inset points. Um, if it doesn't quite work, just drag the points around until it works. This has created some holes all the way through the slab. And that sits right in the middle of our engine. Now, finally, we're going to create uh, some red loft objects, which are long swooping shapes. Now the curve order in lofts and the direction of the curves is important. Um, I'll show you how to draw this simple loft here. So we're drawing along the shape and then the beginning and the end of curves. So there's three curves, a long beginning, end, and just reshaping them and adding some depth. That's the simplest lathe. Now we're going to draw one with four curves. So a long, beginning, end, and a fourth curve along the top. So we've drawn one side, two other sides, and then the, f the fourth side. Again, we're dragging these curves into place and the created surface will follow between the curves and make a nice smooth shape. And mesh mirroring, using mesh mirror, will then turn that into a solid object. We can use the same technique again to make the, the cockpit, the windscreen. It's drawing along the start, if we draw the end the wrong the curve in the wrong direction it'll t make a twist in the model like this so we need to delete that curve and draw it in the same direction that we drew the front curve so if we're drawing bottom to top we need to draw both curves bottom to top just move those curves into place with the soft move tool redraw them as nice smooth curves um, Ideally, the curves should form a sort of a connected mesh. They don't have to join up. And I'm drawing the top curve there, just a tiny short one to smooth that off. Again, mesh mirror completes the shape. Now the last shape here is a composite shape um, made out of a, a voxel merge of a loft and then some cubes. I'm just going to rotate and move these cubes into place using rotation with the rotation snap turned on to place them accurately. Now you could use any shapes for these um, cylinders, spheres, any of the other primitives, and um, they can all get voxel merged together. But in this case, we want a simple mechanical shape with these sort of flanged parts sticking up. Again, we're going to shift, drag to select them all, control G to group them. I'm going to make a copy so we can see the difference between the meshes. This one's a nice simple low res mesh. If we set the voxel merge properties to fine, it'll work on the make lots and lots of resolution. And then we do voxel merge group on the group. 
Uh, it's taken those meshes, joined them together, made one continuous high-res mesh. If we use sculpting tools and reduce to 5%, that'll strip out most of the triangles and give us a lighter weight mesh, which we can then smooth with S, making a completed engine block. And there's the final model with all of those parts put into place. I took this into Blender to do a, a render to get the nice metallic effect. There it is, sculpting in Curvy 3D 4.0.